In Jesus' name, we we'll worship. Our Father and our God, once more we are grateful to you for bringing us to your presence today so that those who have ears to hear in this journey of life and worship will be careful to order their steps and to follow the way, the truth, and the life. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. Listen and listen very carefully. I believe that we truly believe that we are the sons of God. The God who created the heavens and the earth is a holy God. He revealed himself to the universe, to creation, through his word. Without God releasing his word, there will be no creation. Without God speaking and giving instruction of direction, nothing will have happened. And we will not have known God. In fact, we will not have existed. So our existence, I plead you, I cry in my heart for you. Our existence stems from the word of God. Our existence, why we have life, it is because of the power of the word of God that he spoke concerning us. And the word he spoke concerning us, he spoke a word of oath and vow. That this is what he must do. He must create, he will create us in his own image. How it's like. And after living like, going like, Doing things like him. I beg you, please, I beg you. God is not interested in demonstration. I beg you and I beg you again. God is not interested in arranging and calling people into a gathering and every time of the gathering, you get the smoke of praise and the drink of praise. And you start dancing and jumping up and down. It is good, very good, because it is the smoke that intoxicates, inspire you. When we are singing and dancing, we are smoking the positive intoxicant of God to set us on fire. When we drink the drink of the Holy Ghost, it gets us drink to get us on fire. So, when we drink and eat it, we are positively intoxicated to carry out a work, a job for him. I beg you, please, I beg you. Because the things we do of religiosity, they are abomination unto him. I am pleading with you. Just look at what the people that have the power of the devil do, there are things that intoxicate them, that set on fire. Either cocaine or marijuana, they take it and drink it 
And if there is any song to chant, they chant it to stimulate themselves for action. They don't just carry and smoke anyhow. When they are taking those powers, it is to carry out certain, in, certain action in the world. They are ready for action. What did you drink the Holy Ghost for? What did you smoke yourself with in, in praises and worship? I will continue to speak to you as long as I'm alive and waiting for rapture that you, are, you have gone astray. The Jews that handed over Christianity to us, there are three things they do. Their deliverance from Egypt, from bondage. There is what they call the Haggadah, that they recount how they were delivered out of Egypt and they are joyful of their deliverance from Egypt. They have another feast, the Pentecost, which I've just mentioned, is the power of God that comes from God, the Holy Spirit, to fill them and open their eyes to know the different gifts that God put in them and then generate, develop that gift so that they can manifest the gift that God gave to them in various aspects of life. And when somebody receives that gift, knows the gift, is joyful of his capability and ability of what he can do, use his hands to do, use his head to do, and the, and the length of movement of travel that he can do for a wonderful rich and gold setting for God and for himself. I will continue to remind you when you Continue this idolatry worship. The purpose of us eating and drinking is to get energy for us to go and work. If you, if you always eat and drink and you are not working, you sit in the same place, something is definitely wrong with you. The third feast that God handed over to the Jews. Three Jews, three feasts in name in Leviticus 23. These are my feasts. They are the feasts of gladness, of rejoicing when we mix it with labor. When we are delivered out of Egypt, we rejoice for our deliverance. When we ask God to come and be in our midst so that he can empower us by the power of the Holy Ghost. We rejoice that what we could not do before, God has given us power to do it. The purpose of gathering in the church is to be intoxicated with the power of God and go out there, go out there, go out there, go out there. Go out there in the field of God where Satan has held the children of God in bondage. Go out there if you are filled with that power. Go and bring them in. Bring them out of Egypt. Bring them from bondage. That is the reason why we gather together for the Lord. If we gather and gather for the Lord and the songs that God gave to us and the songs and the inspiration that Holy Ghost gave to us and we come every day and dance with our and dance and, and dance 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 without doing the work he asks us to do, hey, something is seriously wrong. And I will continue to remind you if all the we, I, I hope there is a, a Sunday school that took place here. Sunday school? Sunday school that took place here. Okay. What is the purpose of Sunday school? 
the old rituals, the disobedient rituals, the continued disobedience by teachers and members. Continue. Let me speak to you. This is the house of God that he placed me over and together, together over. If you are going wrong, it's my desire. He will demand your, your blood from my hands. The world is dying. The world is dying. We are here. We are dancing Kokoma. We are dancing this thing. We are dancing this thing. That is, that is meaningless. That is meaningless. The joy of the Lord is my strength and your strength. You should know when the joy of the Lord is there. I was inside. I didn't feel any joy. We are singing, but I didn't feel any joy because there is nothing we are doing to make God joyful. When a soul is one, you go out there, you win a soul and bring it, bring the soul in. What happens? There is joy in heaven. There is joy in heaven. And we don't mind. We don't mind. We don't care. From the altar, from the music. Look at things I said here. I said here. From dancing, we learn rituals. We learn different things to sing. But we don't care whether what we are doing is pleasing the Lord. Let me speak to you today as an apostle. And that is why even you yourself, your life as a father, mother, and then children. If you don't correct these things, you will see that devil will come and carry you and sweep you away because the one who came to his house to come and sing praises and worship and dance, you abandon him, you refuse to please him. Since you refuse to please him, you must then please the enemy of God. We hear, we hear. I was hearing prayer this morning. Hearing prayer this morning. Oh God, I don't know the prayer that you are praying. Oh God, uh, give us, reveal yourself again and reveal yourself again and reveal yourself again, reveal yourself again. Those are wrong prayers. Question the dis our disobedience. Question why he continues speaking to us. We are not obeying. That's the kind of prayer that God wants us to. He wants to hear. Oh God, we call his name. You are great. You are awesome. You are this. You are this and that. Glory be to your name. We carry his name. We carry his name. We carry it in vain in our mouth. I will remind, I will continue to remind you that if you continue in this way, continue in this way, in rebellion, in disobeying God, you will see clearly where you will end. But I will, I'm here to do my job, to clean your blood out of my hands, that you will not do this thing uh, uh, before me, before my wash, and I will not speak to you that you are doing the wrong thing. Let's turn to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 12. Now, do we care about time? Do you know what time is? I'm asking now, do you know what time is? Do you care about time that every event is authorized to function by the power of time? Now, who created time? Who created time? God. Do you believe in God? Do you believe in God? If you truly believe in God, stand to your feet, say, I believe in God. Now, remain standing. Your God is the one speaking. Genesis, this is not written by Bishop Okeleso. Now, 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 now the Lord had said unto Abraham, now, now, now. Now, when is God speaking to you? Okay. Now, the, now, now the Lord, the Lord, the creator that is in charge of everything has said to Abraham, 
our Father in the faith, through whom we know God. Before Jesus came, the Son of Jesus. Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, What did he say? What did he say? What did he say? Okay, you are saying it in a rush without understanding. Sit down so that you can sit down to understand. What did he say to me? I, Samson, should get out. Get thee out. Get thee out. Get thee out. What did he say? Get thee out. Get thee out. I want to see you out. I want to see you out. I want to see you out. If you don't get out, you will die in your sins. Is your creator speaking to you and I, the creator? Get it out because my system has been compromised. Creation has been compromised. An enemy has come and he has messed up and has captured my children, the people I created, and he took them to bondage. So I have come because I love you for God so loved the world. I have come so that you should get out. Tell yourself, I will get out. Tell your neighbor, I will get out. Now, I don't have time because I have done some introductions, so I don't just want to, I just want to keep with time. Uh, get D, 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 D out. What did he say? Get D out. Get it out. And he spoke about the place you should get out. Get it out of, out of what? Thy country. I want this country is polluted. I want to move you into another country. And I will show you that country. Get thee out of thy country. What is the second place he said you should get out from? From the kindred. You see, all you and your kindred have been messed up. You are now in the in the in the net, the net of the enemy. So come out of it. Get the out of thy country. Country. Now you are being country. I mean so many things. You, as you are in India, where you are now, you have been counted as a citizen of devil. Where you are, your name is written there. Censors have been taken to know, to know who and who belongs to the devil and who are worshipping the devil. And now, uh, when he does it, when he does it, you see, he's an imitator. When he does it, it takes it family by what? Family. So, where do you find kindred? In family. Where do you find kindred? Family set up. So, the father and the mother, the individual, they are caught by the enemy. And now Abraham, come out from thy country because now in the country, who rules a country? A president. So you are under the president, the, the president, you are under the president of darkness. You are under the president of darkness. Come out from that country where the devil is your president. Come out from that thy family set up that you have kindred, that you flow together in sin and corruption. Now, listen, 
Where is the closest place that sin is taught children? Eh? Answer me now. Where do we start when we are in the world, if you were there before, if you are not a fake? Where do we start learning evil, fornication, adultery, and lies, and stealing? Where do we start it? In the home and family. So all of you, all of you, you, are, you have corrupted yourself because it distributed to family by family. It's a different network of sin. Are you listening? Are you listening now? So you get out from what? From thy country? And from what? Thy kindred. As long as if you get out and you carry your kindred along, you are still relating with your kindred, the same life will spark up again. Evil communication, the corrupt word, good manners. I want you to totally Come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. If you are here, and the purpose why you are here is to get a, a money, you failed. You came to a wrong place. You came to a wrong place. There is no false prophet here. The prophet God put here is a true prophet. He would tell you the truth. If after normally the ways of God that when we gather, we should give offerings. Is that not so? We should give offerings. We should give tithe. But that is not the first thing. What God is calling first and foremost in our life is our deliverance, is our salvation. Our deliverance and our salvation. If you came with money in your pocket, I came home. I came and I know that if God will accept me and my offering, then I must be right with him. God never asks us to go and steal and then come and give him tithes and offering. So listen carefully. and Listen good. Come out from thy kindred and... Uh, <laughs> You stay in a house. You see, it's coming now. Country, very large. Family, also large. Then, but house, house, it narrows it down to house. Your father is housing you. What does it mean? You are staying under the gene, the gene, the DNA, the chromosomes of your father. It's still in you. So if you even though you say you take a step and say, I'm coming out from my country, you can go out of the country. And if the relationship of evil, you are still coming out, and the relationship of evil with your kindred, they are still communicating with you, you are still laughing. Say communication. You are still bound. And now as, as you go, you came out from your country, you came out from uh, your kindred, there is another one that will follow you wherever until you realize because it's deep down is the one who transferred life to you, gene to you, chromosomes to you, DNA to you. DNA is in your, is in your finger. It's, 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 it's in your hands. DNA. Is it a thing that is outward or inward? It's deep down that controls every part of you. So your father and your mother's gene that came together that God used in molding you is still in you. Their character, their nature is still in you until you have to x-ray them and say, this life that my father and my mother transferred into me what is it? It's giving me a setback. First and foremost, we are they right with God. And that's why God was speaking to Abraham. Because his father and mother, we are not right with God. Check the scriptures. They were serving idols. So come out. Come out. Get the out. Get the out. What is it? Get the out. Get the out. Get the out. Get it out. 
say, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a, unto what? A land. Unto what? A land. A land. A land. A land. Now, a, a land is not the definite article D. So, a land. And by the way, which land? The God that is speaking to me, does he stay on earth here? No. If he was staying on earth here, his permanent dwelling is on earth here, then we can understand, come I will show you a land within, within eight years. But the God who is speaking to you is, he dwells in heaven. Our Father who, who what? At in heaven. Our Father who art in heaven. Our Father who art in heaven. If you want to begin through life, what will you say? My Father who art what? In heaven, in heaven, in heaven, in heaven, in heaven. Not the idols that are claimed to be gods, to be father that on earth. Not the one that is hanging, hanging in the, the fallen planets. No, our father who art in heaven, the most high God. Abraham was serving other gods. He moved high, very high. That's why the name Abram. Ab, Ab means high father. What is it? High father. So he was a worshiper. He was high in the worship of idols. And to the extent that the size and the degree of his worship could control a country. And he was very fervent, very fervent in that worship. So, in other words, he got to a place to be the president of his country. Come out from die, your country, which you are controlling, which you possess. And come out from thy kindred, the one, the one that you have also influenced because he was an influencer. Are you listening? So because now you can imagine the status of that person. He's a king. And he does not go alone. Any person said he's a leader or a king and he's going alone, it has been said that he's just trolling. It's not leading. It's, he doesn't have people. He just gets up and he's just walking, strolling. But when a king is going, you will see, you will see what? Enter followers, citizens who are under him, they go with him. Who is coming? He said, The king is coming. Come out from thy country and come out from what? A kindred. A kindred. He also was a great influencer of his, even his own father, that his own father began to know that ah, this person. <laughs> I think he better join him. So in Genesis chapter 11, it is God that, it is Abraham that God, Abraham that God spoke to. But when Abraham announced that, look, I am moving out of this country. Say, what? For what? You are doing well. You are a successful businessman. You are doing well. For what? He said, God of heaven, the one I didn't know before, has called me and his Voice and power ran through me in a wonderful manner that I cannot get hold from it. He has called me. I'm happy that the gods that we were serving before, they are fake. So I'm now living. And they saw his radiance, his ambient, his disposition, his mien. They saw that he changed. He's speaking with authority and power. 
He's speaking with a power and conviction that casts a spell on the hearers. So as he told his father, his father said, my son, you have changed. I will be part of you. I will help you. And his father took over. Now his father took over. It's not his father that God called. It is himself that God called. It's not about family business. See, I called him alone. But in a way, because Abraham was still to learn uh, the power of uh, uh, the maturity and wisdom of sticking to God's voice and not submitting his leadership to his father. His father, he submitted his leadership to his father as a husband, as a wife. God asks you to come out from your father and mother. Who is still leading you in your marriage? Who is still controlling you in your marriage? The voice of your father when you are married, after you have been married, and the voice of your mother still controlling you in the government of your marriage, it will destroy that marriage. Don't say you didn't hear. You can get up now with your husband or with your wife, then your uncle or your father, there is a... The reason, once you leave your father and mother, your father and mother and all the relatives, there is a law controlling them. They call it in law. What is it? In law. Your father will become an in law to the other party. In law. In law. So, which means they cannot cross to you anyhow without seeking permission from the authority, from the head of the marriage. Who is the husband? Woman cannot, cannot be with in the home of her husband and then your father pick phone, pick phone, and, uh, or your mother pick phone and give you, say, I want to see you now, I want to see you now. And then you jump, you jump up and down, you jump up and down and, and run, and you run, and run to go and see your without taking permission. In fact, you should know the truth that if your father and your mother and, your, and any part, any of the in-laws are sending for you they, and they didn't consult your husband, they are doing the wrong thing. A wise father knows that another government has been formed that is not in charge of. So if you want to see who was her daughter, what he would do if he was ruled by laws of God, except he was ruled by different kind of uh, uh, laws of uh, rubbish one that don't mind principles. Who we'll first call the husband. Uh, please, I would have wanted to see uh, your your wife, he will not even say, I wanted to see my daughter. It's no longer in the real sense active, my daughter. Hear it and hear it very well. I want to see your wife. Did I say you are no longer a daughter? But we are talking about heavier principles that governs life. Then, if the father and the mother have know what it takes for a home to cohere and work out in peace, it will begin to teach you the principle. Please, can you kindly appeal to your husband? See that now? Which means he's asking you to give him the respect that is due to him. Are there spinsters here? Are there spinsters in the house? Who are going to marry tomorrow? Uh, yes, if you are not taught this, get it now. You are getting it raw and straight. Because the activity of father and mother can scatter home. Don't say you didn't hear. If they don't operate lawfully. But that's not my, my main target. Get thee out of thy country and get thee 
out of thy kindred. Now, how many of you are saved? You have given your life to Christ. You don't even know. You don't even know whether you are saved or you have given your life to Christ. Eh? If they ask you, uh, they ask you, you are seated now. Uh, how many of you are married? You see, uh, let me reason it. Let me think about it. You know something is wrong. How many of you have given your life to Jesus? You are saved. You sure you are saved? You sure you are saved? Good. If you know you are saved, good. So, now, uh, Abraham, Abraham announced his, his calling that God has appeared to him. God has called him. He announced that he has been an influential man. I said, I said it to you. So when he told his father, the father said, I will buy into this calling. I will follow. But he, he left the position of a follower to become a father and a leader over that column. So they took all from all of Shidens, and then the father led him and his wife and Lot and his wife and other this is to Haran. To what? To Haran and the God stuck there. Where are you now in your journey of marriage? You are supposed to go to the promised land. Where have you got stuck? In Haran. Because you have allowed external influence to, correct, to, to lead you and to order you, so you, you are now in Haran. They got to Haran. It's not my intention to talk about Haran today. They got to Haran, and as long as you were in Haran, the God who called it Abraham never showed up again. Abraham may have tried to communicate. He's not hearing the voice, voice of God again. So they stayed here for a time until, until again. Look at the word. Look at the word. If you understand English language. Now... Now the Lord is saying to Abraham, hmm? I had said, past participle. He had said, which means, it is not now, he's saying it. He has said it before. He said it before in Genesis 11, and it was neglected, disobeyed, and the rest of them, so they got there. But when the time of deliverance came, God said, okay, let me give him another now. Whether he will listen. So now, say now. now. Say now. now. Now the Lord, the Lord, if you, you had another negative Lord, you better do away with him. The one that now, you see that, uh, terror, his father has to die. Because he took over the reins of power and was controlling the prophet, the anointed that God called to lead all of them. Hello? Hello? All right. Ah. Uh, now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and out and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. Now the voice of the Lord came when he spoke to Abraham came from ground or from up. Okay. So what is wisdom? If the voice that spoke to you, if the sun that shines from up from heaven a shining year, and you want to get the benefit of the sun, and the sun didn't come from ground. Where are you going to be focusing your look up? So, 
for you to get direction, for Abraham have to, to get direction, see, as, his, as one of his far, far grandsons said, I will look up unto the hills from whence cometh what? My help. I will call upon the name of the Lord, the Most High, who is worthy of praise and adoration. I will look unto him so that he can guide you. So now, uh, Abraham, listen. What was God calling Abraham to do, actually, after he showed him a land? Now, let's go to verse 2. Verse 2. And I will make the promise, the covenant promise. He's calling him out now. And I will make thee a great word, nation. And I will bless thee, if you obey what he is saying, and make thy name what? Great. Yes, this is a promise in the covenant. And thou shalt be what? A blessing. You see all the, all the blessings attached to obedience to the call. All right? Now, and I will bless them that bless thee. This calling, some forces are going to rise against you. They are going to challenge you and say they will not um, uh, carry out the way of your uh, of going to allow you to be blessed. So they're going to work against you. As God said, I will bless them that bless you. Those who agree to the ways of God you are putting here will be blessed. And curse him that cursed thee, who put obstacle and impediment in your way, in your way, in your way. If your father and mother and relative is asking you, to serve idols instead of the living God. God said, he will place a curse on them. Look at it. <laughs> and indeed, God said, no matter the obstacles you are going to go through, I'm with thee. I will be with you and I will give you victory. So, uh, no, no power can rise up and pull down the power of God, said the Lord. In spite of those who are standing against your progress, he said here, uh, he said, and in thee, in what? In thee. Oh my goodness, say, and in thee, and in me. What were we told that was inside Abraham before? His father's gene. His father's DNA. His father's chromosome. So God said, I'm going to uproot your father gene and chromosome from you and put my DNA, my chromosomes, my gene inside you. So I'm the one that is going to work it out from inside and indeed after he has done, done that that operation and inserted his gene and indeed shall all the families of the of the earth be what a bless a bless a bless a bless a bless amen, amen. if it is fake amen Fake amen. Fake amen. You don't believe in the amen again. Indeed. It's, look at it. And indeed shall must is compulsory, peremptory, asthmatic. It goes with a great force, divine force. And indeed shall, because when God is in you, and his glory, his power is coming out of you as he came out from Joseph when he was in Potiphar's house. Uh, Potiphar surrendered his business and everything to him. Because he saw that the wisdom and the knowledge he carried cannot be compared. He has gone to the university, but this one is... It's beyond the university. It's beyond everything. 
everything he put his hand to do prosper. He now said that you are capable of taking care of my business. And indeed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. How many, how many pe people here have that power in me? Christ in me, in you, is the hope of glory. How many of us still have it? Indeed. 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 Now, you came from a place, is that not so? You have a resident, is that not so? Okay. If you have this power in you, uh, the... What is uh, your neighbor said? Uh, that's one of the close family that is uh, close to you before you go to America, go to India, go to this thing. Your closest neighbor. Where are they? If you have this power of God. And indeed shall all the families of the earth be, be blessed. When the, where do you start counting? From outside or from inside? God. Good, good. That is why they said that uh, uh, ch uh, charity begins from abroad. Eh? <laughs> charity? No, it begins from abroad. Is that not so? It begins from home. From home. Charity begins from home. Charity begins from home. Where was Jesus born? Bethlehem of Judea. In which country? Israel. That's where it began, began from. Has he reached the whole world now? It has. It began from there. It began from there. And those who are going to bring it, spread it, they must be eyewitnesses. They must be what? Eyewitnesses. So your neighbor who is close to you will be the eyewitness that you are truly a Christian or you are not what? If you are changing, if you are changing, if you are changing, now, let me come back to that question. I almost forgot it. Now, when you give your life to Christ and you move out of your country, out of your kindred and out of your father's house, uh, what will happen to your former life? Your former life is gone there will be an immediate, notable change of life, style of life in you. Are you following? Okay. That is why. Has your father and mother and brothers, after you gave your life, after you obeyed the call, have they told you that, ah, you have changed? Have they told you that you have changed? My son, you have changed? My brother, you have changed? Have they told you that, that you have changed? If you have not changed and you call yourself a Christian, you are a fake. Permit me. The reason why I'm anointed is to mold you in Christ. Is to help to direct you in the truth. When I was born again, my mother knew that a change has come to Samson. My mother and my father knew that the gene they transferred to me is no longer that gene because the gene was not completely that of Christ. Are you following? And since the gene was not completely out of Christ, when the light of the word of God entered me, I knew where the gene of my father and mother, certain characters and foibles were messed up. So I disconnected myself from those patterns. And they acknowledge that God is truly in this their son. And I became a blessing to them before they pass on. Now, let's go down. Look at it. Very powerful. So, say so. Accordingly, taking the form of the exactitude, the correctness, the truth, the absolute form that Abraham should take, he followed the voice in the absolute sense. So that's what the word so 
So, according to the instructions, manner of life that God commanded him, so Abraham, what did, what did he do? He departed. He departed. He leave. He left. Because when he said get out, he was being told to leave. Leave. So he departed. So he departed. So he departed. So he departed. Look at it. Look at the word as again. Telling you that it's a chain of the process of walking in the truth. So Abraham departed as the Lord has spoken unto him. And uh, he, has, he became a mentor. Who have you been mentoring? He has seen that the light of God is on this Abraham. He, he had influence over his father, over his mother, over everybody, and the rest of them, he, over his relate, some of his relatives. That was not all the relative he had. But the one that said, I believe in you. I believe in you. So he departed. So what? He departed. Now let's go back with, with the influence of that power. Some followed him. His wife followed him. His wife what? Followed him. And then his children. His children are yet to come. Uh, so now that he has not gotten children yet, the people that through the love of God in his heart is using the the, that, that love for also became almost like his children. That's why he was speaking in Genesis 15. You have not given me children yet, a seed yet, but I have used your love to walk on Eliza of Damascus. And this Eliza of Damascus have uh, imbibed my way of life which you put in me. And it's going to be my hair. God said, no. Eliza should, will not be your, your hair. Your hair is inside your bowels, your womb, your loins. There is something, Abraham, you will do. The children, your children, I'm calling you out now from all Oshaedins, and I'm calling you into a land that I will show thee. And uh, that land, there are two lands, the Canaan, the land of Canaan, uh, which is uh, the branch A, branch 2 of that land. The real land is up where God is. And now I will show you, see, God show me. Which means he will give you the eyes of revelation. Eyes of what? Revelation. Revelation, and when he show you the eyes of revelation, believe what is revealing to you because you are a believer. Many of us neglect the vision God gave, gave to us, the dream God gave to us. We neglect it. I will show you, so as Abraham, because if I'm calling you from the land of uh, the all of Shidens, which I say is already corrupt, you are not going to have children from that land. If I take you to the land of Canaan, which is already occupied by the, by the Canaanites, by the Amorites, by the Jebusites, by the so 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 and so, are you following? That is also a corrupt land, but it is my land. I created it. Uh, I, will, I will evacuate the people from the land and give you that land. But meanwhile, your Children are not going to come from that land. They are going to come from the holy land. From what? Where is the holy land? Heaven. You don't know it again? Where is the holy land? Heaven. So your son is going to come from the holy land. Meanwhile, I will wash and command the unholy land particles that are in you to die away first. Otherwise, they will usurp authority. They will boast that they produce the 
the, the seed, Isaac. So I will come, I will be visiting you, I will be leading you, and when you come up to the faith to receive from that holy land, I will visit you at the time that is set, appointed, and that your wife will conceive a child, conceive and give birth to a child, which I promise you, but it's coming from the holy land in heaven. Uh, meanwhile, you, you are, you are, you, you, you are testifying a good thing, Abraham said, at 99. Now I'm old. How can, at this age, I don't have pleasure, I don't have interest. And Sarah, both Abraham and Sarah, they laughed. They did what? They laughed, he said. As far as the body, where did they create the body from God? The body? From, from the ground. Are you following? And God said, your son is not going to come from the ground. I won't allow you to come from the ground. I'm going to produce him from what? From up. And before I produce him from up, he's going to be up and down. But before I can count and rely on the ground, I will first destroy, sanctify the ground. Are you following? So God did a sanctification so that the rubbish, the things that defy are pushed out and then God visited when uh, Abraham was 99 and the rest of them uh, visited and they had a renewal. All the hormones and the sex hormones that were there that have packed up, the ovary that have packed up, the spermatozoa or spermatozoa that have packed up, God renew and then begin to kick again like young couples. I don't know whether you are following. Are you following? They began to kick like what? Young couple. <laughs> Interest came again. And before you know it, according to the promise of God, pregnancy came. And it's a thing of laughter. It, a thing that will cause laughter all over. What did they happen? This old, this old uh, woman, an old man, had given birth to so, so so. That is the story. That is the story. And if you have the faith of God, nothing shall be impossible unto you. Hallelujah. Now, Genesis uh, uh, 15. Let's go there briefly, quickly. Genesis 15. After this thing, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision saying, fear not, Abraham, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Now, if you flip back to Genesis chapter 11, you will see that Abraham came out of Haran with the souls that they have gotten. They came out of Haran with what? The souls that they have gotten. If you are here and you do not care about getting a soul, it is not the living God you are serving. Because even those who serve devils, they get souls for devil. Those who are committing fornication, that the gift that the devil gave to them is to go and initiate people into fornication. Are you following? They will bring them. Those who are thieves, the devil will give them the power. Go and, you know, it can't be alone. Go and get a, a group and a larger group because this thing is going to be uh, a sweep over the land. So they get souls. The children of the devil get souls. They bring in souls to the devil. You are a child of God. You are saying amen. Amen. That amen will not hold until you obey what God says you should do. You are a child of God. You now know the defining moment. You are a child of God. And God said, you should get souls out of Haran. So now, today, if you have been a child of God, 
what interests God most is getting a soul from him. Let me let you know, those of us who have good cars, wonderful building, and the rest of them, and wonderful shoes and clothes, you are not going to go with them in the day of your calling back home. It is, it is your children, those who remain, that will even tell you what you should wear. But when you are alive, they don't tell you what to wear. Eh? When you are alive, they don't tell you what to wear. In that day, it is naked because they, 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 don't, they don't bury a man with clothes. First and foremost, they must bring him to how he started his life. Naked, they came into the world. How many of you we are in the womb and now you are dressed with Abada in the womb. When you have given birth to how many of you we are pined? You came naked. And naked you are going back. And few persons will be your father and your mother. And that uh, will say, okay, let her not go, go naked like this. They should first, first and foremost, what they will do is to bath you. <laughs> It's to bath the person. Are, are you following? <laughs> it's to bath the person. After bathing the person, they can decorate him and the rest of them. But all those things are useless. And God told Abraham. He told Abraham. I want to round off this. God told Abraham that you are going back to your fathers. To who? Ah, did Abraham have father? Yes, he had father. Enoch was a father who lived, the servant from Adam, who lived holy, and he did not die. He was raptured. He was a friend of God. He was taken up. That's a true father. Noah was a father. Are you following? So God is telling you, you are not the first. I have called people that have done this thing. So, uh, you shall go at a good old age. At what? A good old age. You shall go in peace. Now listen. Peace. You know today we fake ourselves, the fake world. When a native doctor dies, when a false prophet dies, when a sinner dies, they make all the noise I said, ah, uh, what did they say? Let his soul rest what? In peace. It's not going to rest in peace. It's not going to do all the magic and all the nonsense you are saying is if he was a sinner, he will not go in peace. Those are decoration of lies. He's going to hellfire. Is that peace? Is there peace in hellfire? Okay. He said, you will have a good old age and you will pass on in peace. Your spirit, man is two-dimensional, spiritual and physical. Your spirit will go to heaven, to paradise, to Jerusalem, and there will be peace with your spirit. Meanwhile, your physical body will be buried be buried, buried also in peace because when it's buried, since your belief in God, you did not cut it away. Now, when you die uh, in Christ, in God, the property, the content of God will still be in you. And when you are being buried in the grave, you are just sleeping for a period of time. You are waiting there patiently in peace until the day of resurrection unto everlasting life. Are you following? Now, ask yourself, do I know where I'm going to? Open your mouth, man. That's why we are here. Ask yourself, do I know where I'm going to? Okay. Now, have you been able to answer yourself now? 
Ask your neighbor, do you know where you are going to? <laughs> good. There's a couple here. That's good. That's good. They're asking themselves. Where, where? Go. Yes, I know. You will make a good choice. I say you will make a good choice. I have decided to make a good choice. I know where I am going to. But there is an enemy that will fight you so that where you want to go to, you will not go there. So, which means your journey is going to involve battles and war. To make sure that you do not go to where you are going to, you're going to place obstacles, mountains, difficulties. But God said, He is with you. He will, you are more than conquerors. He will take you to where you are going to which he has destined for you. Now I know where I am going to. And I have made up my mind that nothing present, nothing in the future, nothing, whether trial or persecution or tribulation, shall separate me from the love of God. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet and talk to God this morning. If you come to the church to worship God and you did not get souls to God, you have not started. In Jesus' mighty name, our Father and our God, we are grateful to you. Once more, you've made time available to us. And time made available for us is precious in your sight. And also in our sight, because we cannot misuse, abuse, misappropriate time because it will be expensive. And Lord, we know that judgment, the day of reckoning is coming. Oh, Father, now that we have life and by your grace and assurance, you will continue to give us life so that we can fulfill the destiny, the vision, the mission, the dream you've given to us to be a blessing to our families, to be a blessing to mankind, to be a blessing to our people in Benin City, in Edo State, in Delta, and all the states of the Federation. And wherever we step our feet to worldwide, we shall be a blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, Father, we need your help more and more. Strengthen and fortify the power you have given to us in Jesus' name. Amen. For we have made up our mind to follow you to the end. Thank you, mighty God. And let our following you, O Lord, bring healing and deliverance and salvation to people in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, let us not don't allow us in our stubbornness to be fake worshippers who call upon your name, but our hearts are far away from us. Let it be far away in the name of Jesus Christ. We shall be fruitful and productive in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you.